Bob Maloney from MyMMANews.com, and I am talking to Dennis the Great Bazookja. Dennis is fighting in the main event coming up at Ring of Combat 75. I will be there in Atlantic City on Friday, February 18th, the Tropicana Casino and Hotel Resort. Dennis, my man, great to talk to you. How you feeling on this camp? You got less than two weeks out. Just tell me how you're feeling emotionally and physically. I feel good, man. I can't, I can't even, uh, I feel better than ever, I want to say. Uh, it was a rough, it was a rough last two years, uh, last, yeah, two years now, actually. Um, just health, with health and a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that no one knows because I don't talk about it. But uh, I feel good, man. I'm ready to go. I feel like I went through an evolution and I just can't wait to go in there in two weeks and let it go. Well, listen, when you were on the Contender Series, which is where you you didn't win, but you, it was a hell of a fight. Let's let's revisit that. Do you think you learned anything from that fight? I mean, I knew that you had a hell of a chin, but I learned even more. Tell me, you know, when you think about that fight, what's one of the first couple things that come to your mind? So I guess just on a just speaking on a standpoint for myself, you know, everyone knows they're tough in this sport. Obviously, you have to be tough to be doing this. And you know, you never really know until you got to walk through the fire. And I got hit with some bombs in that fight. And not even, not one of those shots ever made me think like, oh, I want to get out of here or made me second guess being in there or nothing really even hurt me. You know, like sometimes you get hit and uh, you see stars for a second or you have a time lapse or like a memory lapse. They stung, but I was in the, I was in there the whole fight. So I learned that about myself that I can really take it and keep coming back and like I, I will never give up. And I, I always said, you're going to have to kill me to get me out of there. Like physically kill me, like make me stop breathing. Um, and I proved it. And, but, and then, but it's different when you prove it to yourself in actual live combat. So there was that. And there was just some lessons, like technical lessons that I learned. Like, uh, you know, if I focused, because I took him down a few times and I, I was uh, in control with the grappling. So if I was just a little bit more patient with the grappling and, and controlled instead of trying to like just transition and move too much and slowed it down, I would have been, it was a big lesson for me too with that. So little stuff like that. Well, listen, you've been in with the same camp for a long time. And, you know, the guys that you train with have had a lot of success. We're talking about Merab Devashvili. We're talking about Al Iaquinta. We're talking, you know, Al Jermaine Sterling, the champ. Now, as they've you know gotten their contracts in the UFC, I'm sure they have more traveling things to do. Have you still been able to get a lot of workouts with those guys? Because obviously they have less time now than they have before now that they're in the UFC. So tell me a little bit about your camp and you know if it's been the same or who you've been rolling with that's getting you ready for this this battle. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question because you know Aljo's been in Vegas, Marm's been in Vegas a bit. Um, so, yeah, I, Aljo came back. I got a lot of working with Aljo the last two weeks. We had some great sparring, uh, great grappling rounds, great, very great training with Aljo. And it's, it's, it was nice to see for myself because a few months ago where he would have a much upper hand, you know, I would win some positions and give him a lot more trouble in positions just in a few months time period, you know, as a, from, last, from the last ring of combat, which was in October. So just in a three month difference, I see how much and, you know, they see it and he sees it and we all and we feel it in the training room, the difference in the progression in my in my game. So it's just exciting for me to see it in the next three months and the three months after that. But I've been working with Aljo, work, worked a lot with the wrestling and the grappling at Sarah's, you know, because my opponent is a grappler. And I've been working a lot with uh, one of my teammates. He just fought last night. So congratulations to him. He won Anthony Delemi. He should be going pro now soon, too. Um, he's, he's a, he was a perfect training partner for this fight. So we had some great sparring rounds in together, some great wrestling. So, you know, this is, this is the team over there. We got a lot of guys, Nas, Charlie, um, Justin, Dylan, there's the Pumi, of course, Pumi. There's so many, man. There's so many guys, great guys in the gym. So that's how you see this fight. I mean, you said Josh is, is a grappler. You obviously love to go out there and, and throw bombs. You think you think that will be his game plan to, you know, try to uh, keep the distance and, and, and shoot in, grab a single or try to get it to the ground to make it dirty? Is that what you think? Yeah, 100 percent. I think he'll try to probably stand a few seconds and then get touched up. And uh, ultimately, he's going to look for the takedown. He, I think he was a college wrestler. Um, someone told me that. Uh, I only watched really like a minute of one of his fights. I haven't even watched anything. I saw he beat a kid from Contender Series. 
Um, I saw like a minute of that fight. It was just a lot of grappling. So, um, but he's tough. You know, he's tough. He's 30. I think he's 32 now. So he's in his best years. He's strong. He's experienced. Um, he's been on a winning streak too. So he's tough, man. You know what I mean? I do think he's going to try to take it to the ground and make it a dirty fight. I don't think he'll try to stand at range with me. I mean, if he was smart, he wouldn't. I'm kind of giving him a game plan right now. I wouldn't, if it was, if I was him, I wouldn't stand in the distance with me. So I think his best bet is to try to take me down and grind me out, which is not, that's not going to happen. You know, if Aljo can't do it, he's not doing it at world champion level. Well, listen, speaking with, you know, one of your Albanian brothers, Armando Jecha, he, he was saying how, you know, he he really looks up to you when he was getting into the sport. You had already gone pro. Is that something that, you know, that you take pride in now because you were younger? OK, you're six and two now. You got eight fights. You're, you're, you're now like an experienced veteran. You were on a contender series. Do you take that leadership role now with, you know, younger teammates and, and other fellow Albanians who were maybe, you know, trying to get to the level you're at? You know, I never really looked at it like that. I always was proud to want to be able to inspire people. But I guess now as time went on and I'm ex more experienced and moving up through the ranks, um, more people are coming to me and asking me questions and reaching out to me. And, you know, I've always had support, but it is it is like it's very humbling for me when people reach out to me and, uh, you know, ask me these questions and say things like, you know, what you just said, Armando said. So it, it, it lights a fire under my ass to, to go out and win and, and you know, make, make everyone proud and give someone something to look up to, kind of like a McGregor thing or a Khabib thing. I always pictured myself like in that, in that stratosphere of, uh, of uh, influence for people like McGregor with the Irish or Khabib with the Russians and Dagestanis. So that's amazing, man. You know, that actually made me happy Armando said that. That's really, that's a nice thing. Well, listen, we, want, we always talk whenever we have an interview, we always talk about, you know, your fans, the Albanian people that come to support you guys. Do you, and they always make it a fun fight. I mean, they love the fights and boy, are they loyal to you guys. Do you want to have anything you want to say to them in, 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 in Albanian or, or in, 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 in their tongue? It's up to you. Do you want to say that your fans are going to be following you? Uh, I just thank you. Always, always, always thank you. You know, you do show them. Uh, I just said, like, thank you. I love you all so much. Um, from everywhere around the world, I get so much support, like from Germany, Australia, Albania, Kosovo, Italy, um, even South America. There's Albanians in South America that reach out to me. It's insane. Um, Canada, of course, man, there's, there's Greece. You know, I could I could go on and on, but people from all over the world that support me, London, absolutely. So it's just amazing. Like, we're all all over the world, but we have one blood. You know, and I just want to say when I win, we all win. You know, it's not me. It's it's every Albanian everywhere. As long as they support me and and believe in me and and want to see me win when I win, it's everyone's win. So I, oh, excuse me. I'm choking up. <laughs> and I know that's how they feel. You know, it's an emotional thing for me and for everyone. So I know that's how they feel when I win, they win. And we're all in it together. You know, we all share the same blood. We're all from the same place. We all have the same history and struggle, family struggles. Um, so always when one of us wins, we all win. Thank you, Dennis Bazooka. Listen, Dennis is fighting in the main event coming up the 18th in Atlantic city. I can't wait to see him do his thing. I hate to like say this to, to a fighter because you know, you only have to concentrate one fight at a time, but Dennis really is at that level where one or two wins and, you know, he could be fighting with some of his teammates in the UFC. I think that highly of you and, and your skill set and your work ethic, give some shout outs to the to your sponsors, to anybody that you want to say thank you to Dennis. Yes. Thank you, Bob. First of all, thank you to you for your time. I always show in love before every fight, man. I really appreciate that on your end. Uh, thank you to my team. Ray Longo, my coaches, Matt Serra, Ally Quinto, Aljo, Marab, everyone at the gym. All uh, my sponsors, I want to say thank you to Gazmend, uh, Lindy, Sadiku with uh, Triangle Scaffolding, uh, Echo, Leo, Benji at TVR. Man, you guys, I love you guys so much. Joe Spinelli, he's been a huge support for me the last two fights and just an amazing person with Gold Coast Mortgaging. He's an amazing guy. Uh, Impact Dental and Face Me Fist, I'm wearing my our jacket, you know. Got the new logos on link in bio. If anyone wants to buy, support some apparel. And uh, Dennis Jari, man, he's another Albanian guy. His name is Dennis, too. Uh, very nice, polite, successful Albanian man who, who just wants to see me do good. So all these guys want to see me do good. This close-knit Albanian group, um, you know, they, they just love it. They love me. They want to see me do good and support me. So I love them. I'm so thankful for all of them. Um, 
and God willing, we all go to the top together and we take over the world. Dennis, best of luck to you with your final preparations. Weight cut, best of skills to you. Can't wait to see you on the 18th and, and have a safe travel there and a great weight cut. And we will see you soon. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and watch you work. Likewise, my brother, Bob. Thank you so much for your time, man.